So I agree with Pastor Heather. It's really hard to follow that. <laughs> when Pastor Heather asked if I would share a message when they were both gone, I decided I'm just going to preach from the lectionary. Whatever it is, I am going to be inspired by it. And then two weeks ago, I sat here, like many of you, listening to Carter share his statement of faith as he completed the ritual of confirmation by becoming a member of this church. As he spoke, I was inspired by his expression of faith. I too wrote a statement of faith when I was confirmed. I do not remember the words that I wrote 40 years ago. I do know that my faith has evolved over the decades since my confirmation. Psalm 33 is a song of praise, a call to worship in the temple with song, music, and shouting because righteousness and kindness, because of the righteousness and kindness of God. And the New Testament lesson, Matthew reminds us that Jesus came to the earth for all. He accepts those who are imperfect as long as they seek to know him. Don't you love it when a plan comes together? It just fits so well. So with that context, I invite you to journey with me to the churches and the doctrines that have formed my faith through the decades. Those of you who know me know that I love to make meaning out of symbols. So for my journey of faith, I offer you a tree. One caveat regarding this journey you are about to take with me, I am not a religious scholar. I share with you my understanding of each of these denominations which have marked my journey. I offer this meditation to inspire you to explore your own history and to meditate on your own statement of faith. I was born in Kerala, India. Kerala, translated to English, is the land of coconut trees. Think Hawaii without the lava. <laughs> I was baptized in the Marthama Church as an infant. My parents dedicated my life to Christ for me and dedicated themselves to bringing me up as a child of God. I can see the question on your faces. What? is the Marthama Church. The Marthama Church is the continuation of the St. Thomas Christians, a community founded in the first century by Thomas the Apostle, who is known in that region as Mar Thomas, or, sorry, Mar Thama, St. Thomas. In India, just as everywhere else, divisions created multiple denominations of the St. Thomas Christians. I was born into a family of proud Marthamites who lived to serve the Lord. Would you play that clip for me? No. Elisa Vito, the character played expertly by Marissa Tomei and my cousin Vinny. I come from a long line of pastors. <laughs> my father was a pastor. My grandfather on my mother's side was a pastor. My mother's brother was a pastor. My grandmother's brother was a pastor. My great grandfather on my father's side was a pastor. I grew up singing, praying, and playing in church. While in no way does that qualify me to be a pastor, something had to rub off. Now, why would Thomas the Apostle go all the way to India? In biblical times, Kerala was known as the Malabar region. During the time of Moses and Solomon, the Malabar coast traded spices and luxury articles with Israel. Thomas, it seems, took Jesus quite literally when he said, go to the ends of the earth he went to a small Jewish community in the southern region of Kerala. The basic principles of the Marthama Church are 
Justification by faith alone, salvation by grace alone, mediation through Christ alone, and the priesthood of all believers. I was so fascinated by Thomas and this history that a very patient Sam agreed to include St. Thomas Mount as a stop on our honeymoon journey through India. This fascination ended a few years ago with the help of our then church librarian, Jim Lawson. Jim pulled the gospel according to Thomas for me to read. He warned me that I would not enjoy it. <laughs> he was correct. <laughs> what I gained from reading it is an understanding of some of the traditions of the Marthoma Church and where they originated. The foundation of my faith is deeply rooted in that tradition, and yet the good Lord gave us freedom to grow and spread our branches. My fledgling faith was formed by the songs and prayers of my grandparents, my parents, and my parents' siblings. Now let's turn to the trunk. When I was four years old, my father got a scholarship and flew off to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania to study at Pittsburgh Theological Seminary. My mother stayed behind in Kerala with the three of us kids. In 1974, at the ripe old age of five, I traveled across the globe to live in student housing on the campus of Pittsburgh Theological Seminary. In those incredible four years in Pittsburgh, there were trials and tribulations. Dad worked several part-time jobs and carried a full-time course load. Mom worked at the mailroom of the seminary. We were latchkey kids. And yet, we were wrapped in love and attention. Dad's way of managing to spend time with us in those days was to incorporate us into his studies. I remember Greek and Hebrew flashcards. <laughs> I remember the Alpha and the Omega, but not much in between. <laughs> when Dad finished his studies, he was ready for one full-time job, and he took on one that came his way, a small United Presbyterian church in rural Ohio. From fourth grade through high school graduation, I was active in the Yellow Creek United Presbyterian Church. The farmers, teachers, and school bus drivers that made up that church were incredible, loving people. Their faith was simply a part of who they were. Forty years ago, in 1983, the Presbyterian Church USA was formed by a reunion of the United Presbyterian Church and the Presbyterian Church. The reunion was an exciting time, which came complete with a new statement of faith. While recognizing the realities of diversity and disagreement in both the church and the world, members of the drafting committee sought to articulate the new Presbyterian identity. And part of that statement of faith which amazed me so as a teen, still resonates with me. So I'll share a quote. In a broken and fearful world, the Spirit gives us courage to pray without ceasing as witnesses among all peoples to the Christ as Lord and Savior, to unmask idolatries in church and culture, to hear the voices of peoples long silenced, and to work with others for justice, freedom, and peace. In gratitude to God, empowered by the Spirit, we strive to serve Christ in our daily tasks and to live holy and joyful lives. Quite a statement of faith. The trunk of my faith was formed by the Scottish Presbyterian farming community on the banks of the Ohio River, which allowed me to test and rebel as I grew physically and sang with the church choir, I grew in faith and understanding. I even taught Sunday school once I turned 16. Who knew that those skills would come to use oh so many years later at the Methodist Church? The Branches. 31 years ago, I met Sam, and three years later, we got married. My faith branched branched out to include Episcopalians. <laughs> 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 
Abishai was baptized in the Episcopalian church. The differences were in the governance of the church and the manner of worship. But the guiding principle was once again the same, belief in the triune God and grace. We attended the Cathedral of St. John in Cleveland and spent all major holidays with my parents in Strongsville at St. Andrew's Presbyterian where dad served. I was working full time, law school at night, and busy as a newlywed and then as a mother. We attended church services but no other faith formation activities during those years. Even so, my faith deepened as I made room for meditation and worship in an endlessly busy and sleep deprived chapter of our lives. To clarify, the sleep deprivation was more about law school than it was about being a new mom. Abishai was not only a good sleeper, but he was skilled at putting his father to sleep as well. I'm pretty sure if Abishai were here today, there's a good chance that he would be asleep right now. <laughs> and that brings us to the leaves. The life of any tree is in its leaves. They pop out in a burst of color every spring and grace us with the green that makes this the evergreen state. In March of 2000, the good Lord led us to this faith community. Sam, Abishai, and I, goodness. <laughs> Sam, Abishai, and I found a place where conservative and liberal, gay and straight, homeless and housed, all worshiped together. We felt very much at home. My work was challenging, and these walls were a place where I could recharge and prepare for the coming week. I became active in the chancel choir, taught Sunday school, and served, and still do, on many committees. Sam learned to work the soundboard, and we became balcony people. <laughs> we raised Avishai here in this community, and for 23 years we have been a part of the life of this church. And if any of you is doing the math, that's the longest that we've sat still. Methodist and Presbyterian beliefs differ in some fundamental ways. Methodists reject Calvinist predestination I never bought into predestination anyway. <laughs> Methodist governing order was developed over centuries by bishops, while Presbyterians have a strong tradition of elders leading by example. I might have brought some of that well-equipped lay leader concept along on this journey. Both believe in potlucks. The Marthama principles of justification by faith alone, salvation by grace alone, meditation or mediation through Christ alone, and the priesthood of all believers fit seamlessly into the Methodist way. So here I am in my 50s, soaking up the sun all three days of summer <laughs> and living out my faith. What does this journey say about my faith today? Where has all this striving to reach up to the heavens brought my faith? Is my faith the coconut tree that rooted me? Is it the maple trees on the shores of the Ohio River that formed the framework of my thoughts? Is it the buckeye of my early adulthood that strengthened and gave me shape and form? Is the best image the evergreens of the Northwest that reach for the sky, sometimes bending and contorting to seek out the sun in amazing and beautiful shapes. That I do not know. I do know that I love each tree and they are all a part of me. For as long as I can remember, my favorite verse has been Micah 6, 8. What does the Lord require of you? 
but to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with your Lord. My statement of faith today is still grounded in that verse and in the statement of faith adopted by the Presbyterian Church in 1983 when I was just a sapling. It is rooted in the deep, rich soil of the Marthama traditions, touched by Episcopalian generosity, warmed by Methodist hospitality, and watered by interfaith acceptance. I believe in the Holy Spirit that gives us courage to pray without ceasing, to witness among all peoples to Christ as Lord and Savior, to hear the voices of people long silenced, and to work with others for justice, freedom, and peace. I believe in the love of God the Creator, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, who is our Savior and by whose grace we are cleansed of our sin. And I believe in making a joyful noise unto the Lord. Amen. And now I invite you to join me in prayer. From root to leaf, God is with us. Thanks be to God. As we continue into our time of prayer together, I invite you to hear our prayer song. I love to tell the story. If you'd like to read along or sing along, you can find the words in the hymnal, 156. If you're here with us in person, we invite you to come forward and light a prayer candle. If you are worshiping online, we invite you to share your prayer request, place your hands over your heart, and trust that your prayers are being held by God and by this community.